new project the electro motor with the anchor winch doesn't look good we tried it one and a half year ago and it stopped working or started to stop working so i need to loosen up those nuts from one of them is at the other side and i can't really climb into here i wouldn't see anything so i just need to do it by feeling i must say although this all looks very rusty that it comes off quite easily but there's a lot of grease or i don't know on the bolts and everything so that's not corroded so that's a nice thing so let's see if we can get this thing out the bolts are loose but it's still kind of fixed on the shaft uh, I need something else Here's the shaft, so I'm making progress, but I'm still not there. At least that looks promising. That's it. Man. Surprise me that it is not totally corroded. I guess because one of the previous owners, I think a few owners back, has put a lot of grease on it. Better put these things back so you can't lose it. This is a shame. The last one just broke off. So I need to drill this out and put a new one in I hate that but let's stay happy because it doesn't make any sense to get angry or pissed or depressed because it won't make any difference so I got this thing out and I'm gonna take it apart as you already saw this little bolt is broken the other ones are still okay. So we have two components over here, the electro motor and the gearbox. So what the gearbox does is this. An electro motor has a lot of uh, RPMs, uh, but it's not so strong, not strong enough for this kind of work. So what the gearbox does is it takes the RPMs of the um, electro motor, puts it on a small gear that is connected with a bigger gear so that the lots of rpm with not that much power are converted to a low rpm with lots of power which comes out through this i put a lot of uh, wd-40 on all those bolts and let it sink in for a few days a few times so i hope nothing will break anymore but i don't hold my breath these look very good stainless steel So there's oil in the place where it shouldn't be. So I think this seal is leaking. I'm a little bit afraid for these ones because they are rusted. Looks like they've never been opened. Always afraid I... This one goes. What about the rest? Maybe first clean it up a little so the tool fits in it. Two. All four of them are loose, so I'm a happy guy again. I can see a ball bearing in there. So it needs 
to slide off that shaft. And there it goes. There's some stuff in it, but it still feels good. So this needs a good clean. Now I guess this is an oil-filled gearbox, because there was oil in between the gearbox and the electromotor, but there's not a drop in this anymore. Seal again and also a bearing. To be honest, I absolutely don't know how to get this out because here's nothing and I don't dare to put a screwdriver against that one. There's nothing, nothing to get a grip on without destroying it. So maybe I'll just leave it there. The question is, can I get this out without first getting this out, the pinion wheel? Normally you should first be able to get the big wheel out because it slides out in between those teeth of the pinion wheel. So let's try that. So let's see if I can first clean it up a little bit with this. It's quite rusty, but... So I at least uncovered something in my iron oxide research uh, thing. <laughs> it's F2 plus A, F1 minus. Don't know enough about that yet. I say yet because you can learn anything, right? Some things you won't be that good at as some other people, some specialists, but till a certain extent, you can do most things yourself if you uh, read about it. Uh, Google about it, uh, look, look it up on, on YouTube. Maybe there's someone who did it before or knows a little bit more than, than you do. But it's always good to try to see if you can do it yourself. Saves a lot of money and uh, gives you more knowledge. So if you're at sea and there's a problem, you can solve some things yourself. Not that you gotta do anything about a, an anchor winch at sea, but it could be something else. I drained those bolts in WD-40 to get them out easier because I don't want to break anything off. As you can see, the gears still look good. Also from the pinion wheel. I don't think they've been used much. Bearings still feel good. No play. Of course those gaskets are gone. So I need to make new ones. Now as far as I remember we have some spare gasket material. So I can make those two. This side and this side new ones. And that's actually the only gaskets. And then of course we have those uh, those seals. I'll see if I can get them somewhere here in Greece. Otherwise I'm just going to try to reuse them. So while I'm busy doing this, I was thinking by myself, what? What if I, and maybe it's a stupid idea, but what if I change this gearbox from an oil bath lubrication to a grease lubrication? So I just drill a hole somewhere, put in a, a, a grease nipple, and that's it. So I'm going to do some research about that, just to be sure that I don't do very stupid things. I can't get it off in one piece, which would be handy, because then it's easier to make a new uh, gasket. But By the way, this is a metal gasket. I only have paper gasket. So after getting the gaskets off, I need to clean the stuff. I use some uh, white spirits for it. There's somebody else doing it. Looked like he knew what we was doing. <laughs> so I guess I'll do the same. There's a lot of um, grease everywhere and other stuff. So I need to clean that up. 
La la la. When you clean stuff up, it looks so much better already. Not like new, as you can see, but. You get all the old grease off, oil, whatever it is, which is a good thing. As you saw in the previous video, Anya is back and one of the things she brought is this, two oil seals. So at last I can finish this thing. Now it's not going to be a full refit of the windlass because some things I just can't get out, like some of the ball bearings. I just don't have the tools for it. And like I said earlier, it's hard to get the right materials over here. Now I have a problem. There's a lot of things quite rusted. One of the electrical connections, this little bolt, has broken off uh, within the nut. So that is a thing. And I cannot get it out. It's a, uh, I don't know, it's a, a, I think a bolt from the inside. And when I turn the nut, the bolt turns with it. So I need to open it up. Um, I don't know precisely what they are for. I asked a question to a Lumar dealer about it and he didn't know it either. So he needs to look up some documentation. One thing I know is that this bolt and this bolt are the pluses. I don't know. The word in English, in Dutch, it will be a steering cable. So these are the two steering cables to let it turn left or right. This, I don't know, there's an A. I found some electric schematics and it looks like the A is the plus. But uh, when I measured the, the cables and I and I tried it out, these were two pluses. This one do, does nothing. And there is a voltage difference between the steering cables and I guess this is earth because this is the steel outside of the electromotor. So that is weird. I don't understand why. So maybe the cabling is just not right. But uh, the electrics weren't working anyway because um, when we tried it out, when we measured the electrical system, it looked like one of the solenoids was stuck because when I switched the main switch on, it already clicked behind this wall and I continuously had 12 volt on one of the plus cables. Let's see. Hello dear. So it's this switch. This is anchor down, this is anchor up quite logical and when I do this there are two pins going down and they push the actual switches down there. First instance I thought it were the solenoids but after searching for a while it uh, appeared to be the switch. It was grease in it and it was so thick and hard so the switch didn't have the chance to come up again against the pressure of that uh, grease. Actually simple solution but it takes a while before you find it. And there's also a foot switch. With this foot switch you can only uh, pull up the anchor and not let it down. But that's not important because you can do it manually. So now everything is working fine and that's already something. Now the electromotor. It took me a while to get these bolts loose because everything is old and stuck. I'm always so happy that they don't break because that's a nuisance. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Sometimes I really feel like an amateur, but maybe that's because I am an amateur. Anyway, this is loose. This is probably not the most professional way, but I don't have a plastic hammer anymore. I'm broke. I can't find one. So maybe very carefully. By the way, people, if you see me do something that's totally wrong, just put it in the comments. Because I am an amateur and I know far from everything. Well, it gets loose. 
I only need to get it open far enough so I can get to that little bolt because and the thing is to get to the bolt this thing needs out but this thing is connected to the bolt with a cable but that's the bolt over there let's see what I can do it's too short cannot remove it so maybe if I remove just this nut and make it thinner nah I don't know uh, the solution see there's just one cable connected to this so the only thing I need to do is loosen up this cable which doesn't work Technical design is an art in itself. There is a nut behind it that just turns with this bolt. Oh. Like always, it seems it need to be difficult. But with a little bit of luck, yes, I actually could have left this. I hope you can see it like this. When I turn this, not nice. So I try to remove the nut, but this also breaks off. So maybe I just can use a standard bolt for this. So let's see if I can find another bolt that is low enough. That is low enough not to touch anything. No, it's too big. Too big. Although, would not be so bad. A little long, doesn't matter. So, as you can see, the hole is a little too small for this one. So, I need to file it out a little. Yes, also big enough. So let's see if I can get this. Yes, this is nice, eh? And then this little bushing in. <laughs> Which doesn't fit either. All right, all right, all right. Of course, everything needs to be isolated, otherwise the bolt would touch the outside, which touches the ground. And then you get a shortage. That's it. Then this one. And then a nut. Ta-da! And that's it. Looks good. Let's see if I can fit this back without breaking anything. I think it's a little hard to see. Yeah, you can see it. You see, room enough in between the core and the bolt.
So that was it. One piece again. I hope it works. At least everything fits. So, but the thing was the last time we used it, and the only time we used it, something went wrong. So I hope nothing is burned. But at least I'm happy. <laughs> it looks good. So I got these old oil seals, as you know. These are the new ones that Anya brought from the Netherlands. I need to get those out, as always. Careful. I think I just need to destroy them. It's partly steel with uh, rubber around it, so... And I guess it's here for 30 years already. See? It looks old. Even older than I am. Although it isn't. Here it comes. Well, and this a beautiful new oil seal. <laughs> yeah. That needed replacement. Number two. Right size. Yes, right size. Um, I leave the bearings. This bearing looks as new. No torsion, it feels good, no play at all. This one looks like new, no play, very good. This one looks a little rusty I already took away the rust a little bit but it turns very very good and there's no play in it so this thing may be 30 years old but uh, when we look to the boat when we look at everything it looks like it hasn't been used that much I think there's not many hours on this windlass. This one is easier, pops in. Because there's no pressure and higher temperatures involved and I don't have paper gaskets I'm gonna use this fluid gasket, silicone gasket, it's high temp stuff, but like I said, no higher temperatures, no pressure, so this must be enough. At least that's what my little brother says, and my brother is a professional technician. So if this goes wrong, little brother, it's your fault! No rings needed because this is plastic, so there is uh, some flexibility. Thank you. 
Before I'm gonna close this thing up, I'm gonna fill it with oil, of course, with gear oil. Loomer has a special oil for it, and uh, I've seen tests of it uh, compared with normal gear oil, with sewing machine oil, with grease, with I don't know what they uh, what they tried. And uh, actually, the Loomer oil was not the best bet. The standard gearbox oil should be good. So that's what I bought. I'm gonna put some plastic underneath it just to be sure. Yeah. It's filled up with ADW90 gear oil and uh, this is full enough. Could be a little more but if the sun is shining on it and it expands I don't know how much there is some room to expand. This is enough to loop everything. It should be good for the next few years. I don't know how you call this, I think a spline and it needs to connect this thingy with that thingy. So the electro motor and the gearbox are okay, are ready. So now I have to mount this under the windlass again and hope that the thing works. I already fitted the gearbox and the, and the electro motor on the winch. Didn't want to tire you with that because it was just a few nuts. Although the last nut, it was behind the electro motor, behind the gearbox and in between then the say bulkhead it cost me more than an hour really literally to tighten that one annoying nut so we're going to try it out Anya has at the switches and i'm going to see if it works and if it doesn't blow up just to be on the safe side i took the chain off the winch so if anything happens if anything goes starts running automatically there won't be any problem okay do my two seconds okay she um, switched on for two seconds to see if nothing starts running automatically. Okay, one second forward. Yes, yes, I know you expect me to find a solution. Well, I didn't. Uh, I just don't know. I think the electro motor is uh, kind of dead. And uh, I need to find a new one. All the cables are okay. I measured everything. So it should work. And it doesn't. Next time better. See ya.